Joker Foley Adieu is directed by Todd Phillips, who also co-wrote the film. I went into the film with very high expectations, but also very high concerns that it would be a shameless cash grab, confusing, pretentious, meandering, all the things that I had heard rumors of from its film festival debut. Now, I think it's important to note that going into the film, I made sure to stay away from the actual reviews. I'd seen the scores, but I didn't actually read or watch any reviews. I didn't know why people didn't like it. So I went into this film with a very open mind, and honestly, coming out of it, I adore this film. Now, some, some of you are probably thinking that's just recency bias, that's just you being caught up in the wonder that is the IMAX experience, but actually, I went and saw it a second time today just to make sure that my opinion on the film wasn't tainted by the hype. And in preparation for that second viewing, I made sure to go and watch a bunch of other people's reviews. Now that's not something, something that I usually do in preparation for making a video review like this one, but I wanted to know what everybody's problems with the film was. And to their credit, they do make some pretty compelling points. Compelling points I disagree with wholeheartedly because oh my goodness, I love this film. Now, let's just get right into it. The two best things about this film, without a doubt, are the performances and the cinematography. This film has some of the best cinematography of the year, hell, of the decade. There's so many shots that I love, multiple moments that made my jaw drop. I was absolutely captivated and mesmerized by every single second of this film. It is such a visually stunning movie that I can't recommend seeing it in IMAX enough. Also, Joaquin Phoenix is incredible in this film. He continues to surprise me with what he is able to do, the emotion he's able to convey with his face, everything. Lady Gaga in this film was also incredible. I thought that she was an incredible foil to Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. The way that she was influencing him and his decisions throughout the film was very compelling. The score in this film is also absolutely incredible. If it weren't for Dune, I would say that this is easily a shoe in for best score of the year. Now what about the musical aspect? That was probably actually my biggest worry going into the film is that the musical aspects which feel shoehorned in, uh, they, would, they would just be not fun. I mean, I'm a sucker for musicals, so even if it's just weird and kooky, I'm still going to enjoy it. But is it actually good? Does it actually work? Yes. Almost all of the musical numbers in this film are entirely fantastical, but that doesn't mean that they don't have a point. They showcase the emotional state that Arthur is in, what's going through his head, what his distorted view of the world and the case that he's in, and his position with the people and his infamy, especially with a musical number in a courtroom. It's one of the best sequences of the entire film, and one of my favorite scenes of the year. The way that it's able to just show how twisted his mind is, is just something incredible. Now you're probably thinking, didn't they do that in the first film without music just fine? Yes, they did. But they want to do something fun, something different, and I think it absolutely worked. Another fantastic thing about this film is probably the thing that I'm walking away with the most, and that is its ability to captivate your attention. It is absolutely mesmerizing to watch. You absolutely cannot stop staring at the screen no matter what is happening. It's not just visually captivating, it's emotionally captivating too. This film makes a lot of bold choices. This whole movie truly feels like one giant f you to the audience and that is going to piss a lot of people off, and it already has. <laughs> but for me, it's choices like that that really make this movie stand on its own two feet. While it is not a standalone story like the original film that you can just watch without having seen anything else and enjoy, your enjoyment of this film is entirely based on your understanding of the original film. This isn't really a sequel as much as, as it is a part two. That doesn't mean that the story takes you to brand new places and that it is grander in scale and the stakes are higher than ever because it's not. This movie is really just one extended epilogue to the first film in the best way possible. A large chunk of this movie is spent on dissecting the aftermath of that first film, how it affected other people, and the different ways that it affected Arthur himself. The point of this film is to explore infamy, egotism, and infatuation and what happens when all those things come crashing down. It is incredibly tragic, it is dark, but it is most of all a very compelling exploration of what the consequences are of your actions. This really does feel like a movie that it doesn't care 
at all about what the audience thinks. It just wants to tell its own story about the rabbit hole that one very sick man just goes deeper and deeper into. Is this a perfect film? No. Is it messy? Absolutely. But that is what makes it so compelling. It's able to take the mess of the different moving pieces of this film and bring it together to make one compelling point. The point is... Can't really talk about the point. at spoilers. Now for the big question. Is it better than the first film? No. But that's the thing. This film isn't trying to be better than the first. It's simply complementing the first film by giving this legendary character, both in-universe, the Joker, and the character that we know from the first film, it's just trying to give him the send-off that he truly deserves. Did we really need a sequel to Joker? No, we did not. It had a perfect ending, but am I glad that we got one? Yes, because there's clearly more to explore in Arthur Fleck's psyche, and I'm very glad that we did get to explore that. This is an incredible film. Is it perfect? No. Is it a bit messy? Yes. But I don't care. For all those reasons and many more, I'm left with nothing but to give this film a 5 out of 5. Is it the best film of the year? No. But it might just be the most interesting film of the year. Did you guys see Joker Fully Ado? What did you think about it? Let me know down in the comments below. If you didn't notice, I'm making videos again. I've been posting shorts pretty regularly out of, out of the theater reactions to everything that I watch. All that in mind, see you guys out there, and I'll see you at the movies.